Back in Auburn on a uh, Friday before the big game as uh, we get ready early in the show to say hello to the head football coach at Auburn University. And it's still difficult for me to get this out. <laughs> coach Hugh Freeze. War <laughs> Eagle. <laughs> All the epic games you had against Auburn, and one I can remember was one of the most yeah. tension-filled games I've ever seen. Gut-wrenching uh, also. Yeah, it was. It was terrible yeah. uh, the way that ended, yeah. but in terms of many things. But you, you, seem, to, you seem to get – you wear it well. It looks good. I, I like the colors, man. <laughs> uh, it's, it's War Eagle all the way, you know, and the people here just so uh, – they're so passionate about their team and their school and – you, I think I will experience it at a whole nother level tomorrow. <laughs> um, uh, you probably will, but uh, I mean, you know a little bit about rivalry. I mean, yeah. I was watching last night, thinking. I mean, I, that, I mean, I still think that's the nasty. I mean, that may not be the ba the greatest in college football history, but it's pretty nasty. It used to be really nasty. <laughs> I, it seemed kind of tame last night. <laughs> a well, last bit, night was an, <laughs> was it was an outlier. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a great rivalry there too between those two schools, but. This one probably is. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the um, if it's the amount of uh, hatred in this one. You would know better than I. Uh, I I'm no. getting ready to experience my so. first. No, okay. I mean, I think there's a healthy respect, but also an absolute See, disdain for losing. I don't want to criticize you because I've tried to be nice. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Am I totally wrong? <laughs> but. <laughs> To have a great rivalry, uh, you need the fans going at each other, but what you really need are the coaches going at each other. Yeah. And you have already ruined that with your <laughs> insanely close relationship with Nick Saban. Yeah, I saw somebody ask him about that this week, and uh, he was he was very gracious and said, you know, the, the same things I'm saying is I think it's possible to compete uh, – in a way that on that given moment, I, I don't care too much for the other sideline, and I'm sure he feels the same. But uh, when that game's over, I, it's just hard for me. People that have that have uh, been loyal and in, in your corner and and helped you in ways, it's really hard to feel anything other than gratefulness toward them. And I think he and I have a mutual respect, and um, in some ways, um, when when I came into the league, he he. I earned that respect from him, I think, and then um, it's it's just continued to grow. Maybe even helped them some offensively. I think they changed some. Yeah, I think I think you <laughs> contributed to a, a national championship or three. <laughs> or, or, or three. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to Coach Hugh Freeze, uh, Coach, I, we haven't uh, we talked to often during the off season, but le in leading up to the season, right after it started, but uh, but. Uh, what has this experience been like for you? I realize maybe you, you got other things on your mind the day before, but uh, reflecting back on uh, on this, it's it's a grind. Uh, obviously, yeah. putting taking over a program. But let's be honest, you won't you don't want to say it, but you really had very little. Yeah, it was. Uh, I probably didn't understand the magnitude of the rebuild, truthfully, totally, uh, because of my my thoughts of Auburn are. Uh, <laughs> are quite different than, uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to, to what I played against when I was here before sure. and things. And it's uh, for whatever reason, I wasn't here. And so I don't, but uh, the, the rebuild is, 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 is tough at places like this because the expectations are so high and we sign up for that. And we know that the expectations are what they are and you want to deliver so badly. Sure. Um, and you want to do it as fast as possible, but uh, I just I think in this day and time, as good as the league is playing, when I took over at Ole Miss, the league was not top to bottom a as good as it is now. And really, you know, uh, now I just there's not many easy games out there, truthfully. And I think that's only going to continue with the new world of transfer portal and NIL. And so it is a, it is a grind and uh, the recruiting adds a huge dynamic to my job and um but that's it's still not a reason for our kids not to play with great effort and you know we've got to demand that and get that every week and that's probably the most disappointing thing to this point in the season that I don't know that we've gotten that done every single week and um it better be there tomorrow though the, I, I know you can't ever look over your shoulder because this is a you wanted back uh, in in the league and you came to one of the preeminent programs, but you also left a, 
you left a lot for the next guy uh, at Liberty. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sure you've noticed that. I have. I actually, I, I pull for those guys, man, because truthfully, when you leave there, you know you hurt some people and um i'm sure they've forgotten about me pretty quick now <laughs> but uh you know man the job they've done there and yeah there were some good players left there but it's hard to win college football games and um and i don't know them all personally i know the administration obviously and a pool for them and those kids that i recruited there I obviously pull forward but man to get their kids up every single week to play and to put themselves in the position they've done man i, I cheer for them and pull for them which brings us to where we are right now in time. Uh, we're so excited to be here. Then when I, I got home from Knoxville the other day, I, somebody was texting me, and I flipped on the game, and I thought I was, I thought I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I was home in, on a reclining chair. I thought I was watching a horror movie. I, don't, I can't yeah. imagine what it was like it was from your position. Nightmare. It just. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could explain it, and uh, there's nothing to say, but I have to own it and um, try to figure out a way to push the right buttons in our young men that uh, efforts like that doesn't happen uh, on Saturdays when we have opportunities to re represent this school. I, I know it's uh, it's easy to, to look elsewhere, uh, and, and you, after what you said, uh, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about this moment in time because it seems from a distance that, that – Players, no matter where they are, here, any other SEC score, any school in the country, it, it, there's a there's a bigger challenge. It's more uphill to try to get their their concentration level every single week, especially when they know they have the biggest game of the year ahead. I, I was visiting with uh, Tim Tebow this morning, and um, and I'm always seeking wisdom right now more more than ever, probably in my career, because you wonder if your way of doing things is the best approach with the new college football that we're all dealing with because uh, I think uh, all of us in talking to my friends whether it's Nick or Kirby or Eli or Gus or those guys that uh, that I have relationships with I think we all are facing this this focus issue there are so many things that bombard our players these days that are clamoring for their attention and uh, it's a battle for the mind, truthfully, and whether it's their cell phone or whether it's their agent or whether it's their uncle or whoever it is, is part of the dynamics of college football now. And we have to adjust um, to try. I, I do think it's, it's more vital now that I have people in our building that really are into the relational building with our players more than ever. The days of us sitting in a room watching film all the time and preparing our kids and knowing, hey, man, they get another opportunity to play and they're going to be ready. There's a lot of things going on in our players' lives, and I think we're going to have to pay attention to, man, can we build relationships that can speak truth into their life and uh, and maybe they respond differently. But it's definitely a different different day and time. Coach Freeze, how, how does that affect y your message to them? Because you're, you're meeting with these young people every day, and uh, good or bad, whatever the outcome was, you're still trying to get their attention, uh, which sounds crazy, does it not? It, it, it is, and I won't relent on, you know, the plans that I have to, to teach life lessons through the game of football. I think that's one of the reasons I got into it, because it was a – it was a transformational work in my mind. And the battle right now is for us not to let it become transactional. And even though the, the, the NIL opportunities and those things are a part of our game now, I still believe that uh, we owe it to the, to the people in our building and in our room that, man, we are about transforming them into manhood uh, through the game of football. And so I'm not going to stop with that. Does it feel harder to get that message across some days? Yes. Um, I think we've got to pay really close attention to how does that look in recruiting now? Um, do you make sure you're, you're recruiting a guy that you feel like is going to help you drive that culture? And you're going to need, for me, I believe it's going to have to be a good percentage of our team and our recruiting class that I feel like can help carry that message to the locker room. I'll close on that. I was reading a story today about one of your former colleagues uh, as of a few weeks ago in this league who, who's gone. And one of the criticisms of, of him and that program dealt in recruiting. In, in, in other words, you, you, let's just grab five stars by the bushel full. You've coached 
five stars. You've also coached one stars. And, and 